This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for February 20, 2023, man charged after allegedly stealing phone $450,000 chain in Hanover. A man has been charged after he reportedly broke into a home in Negril, Hanover and held up its occupants before making off with over $450,000 worth of goods on Wednesday, February 15. Charged with robbery with violence, housebreaking and larceny is 34-year-old Tyrone Parker of Escher District in Lucy, Hanover. Reports are that about 12 p.m., Parker went to a home and forcibly opened a window at the front of the house, entered and held up a man and a woman who were inside. He then allegedly stole an iPhone and a gold chain valued at $450,000 before leaving. The incident was reported to the police. On Saturday, about 2.45 p.m., Parker was apprehended by the Negril police and later charged following an interview in the presence of his attorney. His court date is being finalized. West Marland construction worker charged for allegedly assaulting man at home. Detectives assigned to the West Marland Police Division have charged a construction worker after he reportedly hit a man in the head with a gun in Ventry District Betheltown in the parish on Monday, February 5. Charged with a possession of illegal firearm, assault at common law, and assault occasioning bodily harm is 52-year-old Donovan Porter, otherwise called Danny Porter, of Ventry District in Betheltown. Reports are that about 7 a.m., Porter, armed with a firearm, went to a man's home and pointed the weapon at him. He then reportedly used the firearm to hit the man in his head, causing pain. The man, in fear of his life, ran and managed to escape and reported the assault to the police. Porter was apprehended on Friday, February 17, about 7.45 p.m., during a police operation at Betheltown Square in the parish and charged following an interview in the presence of his attorney. His court dates are being finalized. UWI to investigate the cause of student protest. A protest a Sunday evening involving dozens of students living on the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies has ended. I've been advised that, that with the intervention of the Mona police and the campus security, everybody has dispersed. The protest is over for tonight. Tomorrow we'll try and find out what happened and get to the bottom of it, said campus registrar Dr. Donovan Stanberry. Details of the cause remain unclear, but the students called for the removal of Dr. Nadine Spence, the Students' Services and Development Manager for Mary C. Cole Hall, an all-female resident. It's understood that the protest was triggered by an incident at a sporting event earlier on Sunday. Many of the protesters were from Mary C. Cole Hall and all-male residents at Chancellor Hall. It was not immediately clear whether there were any injuries or damage to the university property arising from the protest that went on for more than an hour and ended sometime after 9 p.m. The protest comes amid reports that Spence is due to be appointed the interim head of Jamaica's Child Protection at the Family Services Agency. Police and FID say FBI involved in wider SSL probe. The Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Financial Investigations Division are seeking to put an end to suggestions that the Federal Bureau of Investigation has not been brought in to help probe the massive fraud at the Stocks and the Securities Limited. Opposition spokesman on finance Julian Robinson had questioned whether the FBI was in fact involved in the investigation as had been announced by Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark following statements by the head of the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch on Friday. CTOC head Assistant Commissioner of Police Anthony McClockin had stated that local law enforcement had the capacity to conduct the investigation and did not need the assistance of the FBI at this time. However, in a statement issued to the media on Sunday, the JCF and FID said that McClockin was referring specifically to the local aspects of the fraud squad investigation that led to the initial charges against the accused in the case, Jean and Panton, and not to the wider dimensions of the SSL probe. 
They said the FBI has been officially engaged in the SSL case since January 2023, as has been stated by Clark. We apologize for any misunderstanding that may have been caused in this matter. It has been outlined in previous joint releases by FID and the CTOC that this case is a complex one because of the length of time, the number of transactions, and the number of accounts involved, the media statement said. It added, we are already seeing the benefit of engaging and involving the FBI as the extent of the case becomes clearer. There are elements of the case that cross into other jurisdictions and elements that will require detailed forensic auditing. The law enforcement entities said all investigative steps are being taken and all tools and regulatory protocols are being applied to this case. We continue to assure the public that the work to unravel this fraud will be thorough with a view to identifying all connected parties and bringing them to justice, they said. The SSL fraud is believed to involve at least the 3 billion Jamaican dollars. Jamaican athletics star Usain Bolt has been fleeced of approximately US $12.7 million dollars or nearly 2 billion Jamaican dollars in the fraud. Baptist minister says the prime minister has a moral obligation to be more transparent. Baptist minister Reverend Dr. Glenroy Laylor says although Prime Minister Andrew Holness will not face prosecution by the Director of Corruption Prosecution relating to the awarding of contracts, he has a moral responsibility to the country. The matter arose from a probe by the Director of Investigations at the Integrity Commission into several contracts awarded to, awarded to Westcon Construction dating back more than a decade. The investigator found a sufficient cause for concern in the matter. However, the Director of Corruption Prosecution ruled against the proceeding with the charges in the case. Dr. Laylor says, however, that the matter swirling around the Prime Minister is not simply a legal issue. Dr. Laylor, who addressed the matter yesterday on the news, said moral considerations are also important. Allocation not made in 2023-2024 budget for local government to poll. There is no provision in the 2023-2024 budget for the holding of local government elections, which it appears it will not be held before the end of this fiscal year on March 31. The local government election was initially due in 2020, but has been postponed on two occasions since then. Last January, the House of Representatives approved the representation of the People Postponement of Elections to Municipal Corporation and the City Municipalities Act 2022, before the Senate also approved the postponement for a further 12 months to be held no later than February 2023. At that time, Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Desmond McKenzie, who piloted the bill, told the House that given the ongoing novel coronavirus pandemic, in its fourth wave, the holding of an election at that time would put the country at a greater public health risk. He argued that public schools would have to be used as polling and accounting centers, and the desire not to disrupt face-to-face -to -face engagement also factored into the decision to postpone the elections. As the minister responsible for local government, I wish to assure the House and the country that we are still committed to having the next local government elections in the shortest practicable time, said Mackenzie during the debate. The commitment of this administration to the local government system is well known. It is a critical part of national life and it will remain unthreatened. Despite the fact that we are seeking to postpone for an additional year, it does not jeopardize the existence of local government in this country, he said. Since then, there has been no official word from the Andrew Holness administration on when elections will be held, and with the representation of the People Act stipulating that there needs to be five clear days between announcement of the election and the nomination day, and between 16 and 23 days after nomination day before the people vote, it is impossible for the election to be held this month. The Electoral Office of Jamaica has indicated that it would need just over $1 billion to hold the election, but this is not provided for in the 2023-2024 estimates of expenditure tabled in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. The estimates provided just more than $1 billion for the direction and administration of the Electoral Commission of Jamaica, with the lion's share of that $730,000 million being allocated for the compensation of employees.
A further $1 billion is allocated to the ECJ for the registration of voters, processing of electors' demographic data prior to the production of an undated official voters list, and the production of voters' identification cards. While Jamaican governments do not usually include provisions for elections in the estimates of expenditure, this time around there is alarm in several quarters as the suggestion is that the long overdue local government election could be postponed well into next year. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.